Hi, welcome to HowToStats.com. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to perform a multiple regression. Uh, and this is a brief video or a brief demonstration of how to perform multiple regression. I've got another series of videos that go into more depth in explaining how to perform the analysis and the various uh, options and output. Uh, that you can interpret in SPSS. Uh, but in this one, I'm just going to do the bare bones of the analysis. So as a refresher, multiple regression is an analysis you want to do when you have one dependent variable that's been measured on a continuous scale or interval ratio, and you have two or more uh, independent variables or predictive variables that you're trying to predict the dependent, dependent variable with. And they can be continuous, but they can also be uh, categorical. In this case, there are, all the data are continuous. Their uh, discount premium values expressed in percentages um, associated with listed investment companies listed on the uh, Australian Stock Exchange. Uh, and what I want to do is be able to predict uh, or build a regression equation to predict a particular listed investment company's discount premium across time. Uh, based on a series of other uh, independent variables. And uh, what I'm going to do is a multiple regression, a stepwise multiple regression to do so. So I'm going to go into Analyze, Regression, Linear, and I put AFI in the dependent box because that's the dependent variable. That's what I'm trying to predict. And then I'm going to use DJW, uh, ARG, Sin, uh, C I N, and D U I are going to be the four uh, independent variables that I'm going to choose. Uh, and this is just uh, happens to be the case that I want to choose those. Actually, you know what? I'm going to choose all of them. Sorry about that. I just pre I just um told you what the results are going to be based on the stepwise because I want to do a stepwise regression. So what I'm going to do is actually. All of the variables are in the independent box. All the other companies, these are just um, extra variables that I'm not interested in right now. So these are the listed investment company variables here. I've got my dependent variable in there, and I've got my independent variables in the box, in this block here. There's block one of one. There's all, in this analysis, I'm only going to use one block. I'm going to go into method. I'm going to click stepwise. All right, I'm going to go into statistics, and uh, the only thing I'm, I would click is descriptives and part and partial. And I'm not going to go into too much detail about the part and partial. I'm just going to look at them. This is the brief uh, example of how to do the analysis. So, all right, so I've got my independent box with the variables, and I've got my dependent. Click on OK. All right, so this is the output. And what I've got is the descriptive statistics as the first table of results with the means and the standard deviations. And I can sample size of 89 here. Then we've got the correlation matrix. These are the correlations between AFI and the uh, high potential independent predictors from CIN all the way down to AMH. You can see that there's a lot of positive correlations here. 0.6, 0.5, 0.7, 0 0.3, and then there's a couple of negative ones, negative 0.4 over here with CIN. All right, so that's the correlation matrix. Now, in the stepwise multiple regression analysis I chose, the analysis is going to determine which independent variables to include and which to exclude based on a sequential analysis of determining statistically significant predictors that are added to the model. So we can see that it goes from model 1, where it only included DJW, and then it goes to model 2, and now it's including both DJ, DJW and ARG. And it goes sequentially down like that. We can see that by the, by the fifth model, we've got five independent predictors. All right, so that's just a basic table there, not too informative. Then we've got the model summary table. And this is important because in the last model, which includes five independent variables, model five, the R, multiple R, is 0 0.907. So this is like a correlation. It's a multiple R correlation using the five independent variables predicting the dependent variable. That's equal to 0.91. And that cannot exceed 1.0, just like a normal correlation. When we square this value, we get uh, 0.822, which is 82.2% of the variance in 
AFI, the dependent variable, can be accounted for by the independent variables. Uh, and then this is adjusted for sample size. So it's 0.811. Once you get sample sizes above 100, there becomes very little difference in practice between R square and adjusted R square. And here's the standard error of estimate. Then we get the ANOVA table, which is testing sequentially the statistical significance of the model as it adds more and more independent variables. So by the time we get to the fifth model, we've got five independent variables, and they're listed here, predictors, DJW, ARG, AMH, DUI, CIN. Those are all five listed investment companies that were included in predicting the dependent variable listed investment company AFI. Um, I'll remind you that these are discount premium values. So I'm trying to use in the analysis, trying to predict the discount premium associated with AFI with other listed investment company discount premiums. We can see that the F value in the final model, 76.57, with 5 and 83 degrees of freedom, and it's statistically significant at less than 0 0.001. Now if we go into the uh, basically, the last table that's really important, uh, we've got our unstandardized coefficients. Now, so you go to the bottom of the table where you've got your model 5, and here's the uh, intercept, what SPSS calls a constant. That's the intercept. And then we've got the unstandardized beta weights here in the first column. So uh, these are the unstandardized beta weights. And then we've got the standardized beta weights here. So these are standardized regression coefficients, and these are unstandardized regression coefficients. We can see in, bo in both uh, unstandardized and standardized, we've got positive, mostly positive. So a greater uh, discount premium associated with DJW is associated with a greater discount, is also a, a greater premium with DJW is associated with a greater premium in AFI. So their premium values seem to correlate. Uh, with each other, and in the regression model, DJW is contributing in standardized form uh, a value of 0.41, which is very similar to ARG, 0.405. But then we've got a one negative here uh, in CIN, so the model is a little more complicated than just having a whole bunch of positive um, regression coefficients. And then we have here uh, SPSS gives us the zero order partial and part correlations, the semi-partial correlations. I'm just going to point that out that these are where SPSS produces that. I'm not going to talk a lot about that right now. You can go look at the in-depth video uh, for further information. In fact, I'm going to stop the analysis here. That's pretty much the bare bones of uh, multiple regression analysis in SPSS. Now, actually, what I forgot to point out is the statistical significance associated with your beta weights and your part and partial uh, correlations. So if these are significant here, uh, then you know that your beta weights are significant, but you also know that your part and partial correlations are also statistically significant. And these are the corresponding t-values here associated with those tests that are testing these values here for statistical significance. Anyway, thanks for listening and watching.